Inalienable rights. These are the gifts of God Almighty. And the attitude that I've just expressed is given very emphatically in the Declaration of Independence, which at the beginning says men are endowed by their creator with certain, it's actually unalienable rights in the Declaration. So what they said in the Declaration of Independence separating us from England was that there is a God and that he gave us our rights, not government. And then they went on in the very next breath to define the proper role of government. They said governments are instituted among men uh, deriving their just powers from the consent of the government. Uh, and the purpose of government is to limit the power of government. How does it go in the Declaration? And to secure these rights, governments are instituted. To secure these unalienable rights. All right, now, so what are the unalienable rights? Well, they finally got around to discussing them, many of them, in the Bill of Rights, the first of the, first ten, the, first of the ten amendments that are called the Bill of Rights. What did they talk about? They talked about freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of assembly, freedom to petition government, freedom to practice your religion without government interference. Right? Those are the rights, the inalienable rights that God Almighty gave us that were mentioned in the Declaration of Independence, gave rise to the fact that we have a country, and then the Constitution uh, discussed them in the famous Bill of Rights, the very first of the Ten Amendments. So inalienable rights, very important. Uh, you can call them inalienable, unalienable, same thing. Uh, the fact that our country started with a belief in God who gave us our rights is itself very unique. And uh, I don't know of any other country that ever started that way. And what's a horror to me is the fact that you cannot teach that as a positive fact in the government schools today. You cannot positively affirm that God exists. And so therefore you have to uh, skirt around the Declaration of Independence, maybe you go to some other parts of it. But the Declaration of Independence actually has four different places where mention of a deity is given in the very same document. So for us to say that there's a separation of God and state, which is what has become, not separation of church and state, which isn't in the Constitution, by the way. But to say that separation of God and state should be accomplished is a complete destruction of the entire American system. It mostly comes down to what's going on in the schools, where God has been removed from the schools. You're not allowed to. And so how do we treat the idea of the multiplicity of religions within our country? We say the problem is not that God is, in, is not allowed in the government schools. The problem is that there are government schools. Right? Uh, you'll find no word uh, education in the Constitution of the United States. It just doesn't exist. And you will find instead that the founders of our country, most of whom uh, never went to school or if they went to school, it was a private school. It was something that they chose or their family chose for them. And all through the history of our country, most people were educated at home or by a, a, a pastor. I've, uh, I've had some fun sometimes with uh, some college graduates, and I've asked them if they've ever read the Federalist Papers. Well, the Federalist Papers were put together by Hamilton, Madison, and Jay to explain the Constitution to the farmers in New York State, most of whom never went to school, right? And if you read the Federalist Papers, you'll see that sometimes a sentence is as long as a page, right? It's, it's not what you'd call easy reading, but it was understood by the farmers in New York State in 1788, 17... Uh, right after the Constitution was written, in order to get them to want to have the Constitution approved by the state of New York. So get back to the, the question is, how do we deal with the multiplicity of religions? We say, fine, whatever religion you are, go start your school and uh, make your school a better school and maybe more people will go to your school. But to have government involved, especially the federal government, is a huge mistake. And it's something our founding fathers didn't want at all.